have been wanting to make Swedish blinds for years and I have read all about them and I have bought fabric and I've always been kind of afraid to start, but I finally did it. I made Swedish blinds and I wanna share the process with you today. Today I'm going to show you how to make your very own DIY Swedish blind. Um, there's many ways to go about this, but I'm just going to share my particular take on it. I've read a lot of different books and blog posts, and I took a bit of everything and did it a way that worked for my windows and the way that I found to make the most sense and be the simplest. So without further ado, let's get into it in case this is something that you are interested in doing for your house. So first of all, what is a Swedish blind? A Swedish blind is like a roller shade that you would buy that we're used to buying ready-made and that you pull them and there's a spring mechanism and it rolls up. Well, the Swedish blinds they are cloth versions of that, and they have a really simple pull mechanism with a string or a ribbon that rolls them up and down. And they're really charming, and they're really authentic, and they've been used all over Sweden for hundreds of years. I'm not really sure how they first got invented, but if you notice in any decorating books or curtain making books or on the internet or if you look at even like Swedish castles pictures of them you will see these blinds everywhere and they're actually really simple to make despite my paralysis and fears <laughs> um, they ended up being really simple if you can sew a straight line on a sewing machine and do some simple measuring you should be able to do these no problem I actually sewed these up a lot faster than I reckoned it would take me because things always take me long. I'm not a very gifted crafter or DIYer. I think I, I make a lot of mistakes. I, I measure, I make mistakes measuring. Um, it's hard for me to cut straight with scissors, but nonetheless, I was really happy with how these turned out. So either my DIY skills are getting better or these are really simple or it's a combination of the two. I think that's what it is. So. The first thing that you do, that you're going to want to do, of course, is measure your windows that you want to put these in, the length and the width. To the length measurement, you're going to want to add one inch for the seam allowance, three and a half inches to cover your dowel rod, which goes at the bottom, and anywhere from three to four and a half inches to cover the batten, which is the thing that will screw into the window. The batten that I used was a two by two long strip of wood. You could use a one by two, I mean, it really doesn't matter, honestly, as long as it's gonna stay in your window, but just factor in whatever it measures into your curtain. Um, into the length that you need. So I added four and a half inches because I wrapped the length around the batten um, three times before I stapled it. That'll become clearer later in the directions. And then for the width, add one inch seam allowance to the width. So, th so then I use two different contrasting fabrics. So once you've cut out your first piece, length and width, then you can just use that to uh, cut your second piece. I use this floral fabric and then a stripe fabric for the back. If you want to do this contrast look and you're not sure, a good rule of thumb is um, a check or a stripe is going to look great with a floral and the check and you can do either side facing but I chose this floral and this stripe. So then I cut out my two pieces of fabric and then I placed them right sides facing inwards and I sewed all around the outside with my sewing machine. Um, I sewed the two long sides and one of the short width sides. You can leave one of the short width sides unsewed because you're gonna turn it right side out when you're done. And you never do need to sew that up because that's gonna be stapled to the back of the batten and so it won't be seen and it doesn't matter. So you can just leave that second short side um, raw and unfinished. When you finish stitching that 
the two sides together, turn it, turn them right side out and shake it out. And then you can do a top stitch all the way around the three sides again with your sewing machine, just so it lays nice and flat and smooth. You can also skip it. I forgot to film it. I did do the top stitch on one and then when I did the second one, I completely forgot to do it. And they both still roll up fine. So if you forget the top stitch, rest assured, so did I the second time and it worked fine as well. But the top stitch will make it look nicer. You'll definitely want to then once you have your fabric piece um, right side out and top stitched or not you're going to want to iron it so that it lays together really nicely and this is probably the most important part of the whole blind is that you want it to stay nice and crisp Once you've got all that done, it is time to put the dowel rod in the bottom of the curtain and make the dowel rod pocket. So I used a 5 8 of an inch dowel rod and that seems to be a really good size for this and you'll have to cut it to the width of your window. I used a small handsaw just to cut off the excess length. Mine was uh, 36 inches long so I had to cut off until it was only 27 inches long but it was not hard. and. Um, I could even do it myself and I'm not terribly handy. If you just have a teeny little handsaw, that should be fine. You don't have to do this, but if you want to, you could cut a little scrap of fabric and hot glue it to either end of the dowel rod. So even if you looked into the dowel rod pocket, you wouldn't see the raw wood. You would just see more fabric. I decided to do that, but I really think that it doesn't matter that much. But you could, and it's it's pretty easy if you just have a hot glue gun and a little extra scrap of fabric to put on either end. Once you've done that, set the dowel rod at the bottom of the front of the curtain. So this flowered side is the front of my curtain that's going to face into the room. And then roll up the, the sewed end of the blind over it so you know about where to stitch to make your pocket. And then you can just put a pin on either end and slip the dowel rod out and then go over to your sewing machine and stitch up that pocket. Once I had that pocket stitched, I could just go back and slip the dowel rod in the bottom and there it is. So that's going to show on the front. That'll be facing the front. That's the front bottom of the shade. And now it's time to make the little ties. You're going to want to make two ties per shade. And this is what, this is part of the pulley mechanism that rolls the shade up and down. So I measured these nine inches by three inches. It just kind of depends how long you want them to hang down on the shade and how big the, um, the batten is that you're using. But for my batten, which was, it's a one and a half inch by one and a half inch um, batten nine inches worked uh, very well, nine inches by three inches. So just cut out of your extra, it could be your front material, your back material, whatever. I chose to use the back material for a little bit more contrast with the flowers. I cut out two strips, nine by three. Then I folded them so the outside fabric was up and I, I made two, I folded two teeny tiny little um, hems and folded them in so I folded it in half and then so there wasn't a raw edge I folded like probably a quarter of an inch in on either side and folded them inside and then I took this over to my machine and I just top stitched down the length of each tie um, just one time so then at the end I had these two little ties Now lay your batten across the raw short edge of your fabric on the back, the part that you want to be the back. Then you bring the fabric up and over so, so that it is on the back and then you're going to staple the fabric to the back of the batten like so.
once you have your shade stapled to the back of the batten, it's time to staple the rings on or staple the ties on. So you take the ties and you staple, first you put the little O-ring in. These are some plastic O-rings from Joann's. They're one inch in diameter. And you take one of the the nine inch long ties that you made and you just staple it to the back of the batten and you want it stapled so that the loop is going to hang down on the front of your shade and then you do the exact same thing on the other side a good measurement the one that i did was each one of these ties is about seven inches in from the edge of the shade um, you can just eyeball that for yourself whatever looks right for mine um, seven inches in seem to do the job make sure that you slip the o-ring into that loop before you staple the tie on I forgot to do that once and I had to remove the staples and go back and do it but it was really no big deal so this is a heavy duty staple gun from Walmart and I am using 5 16th of an inch or 8 millimeter staples and they seem to do the job really well. Next you're going to need the pulley material. I use this 3 8 of an inch long twill tape that I got from Amazon and you're going to want to measure out three times the drop of your window. So my window's length is 57 inches. So I rolled out this twill tape to 57 inches once, twice, three times, and then I cut it there. So 57 inches times three. And I did that twice, one for each side of the pulley mechanism. Once you have your two lengths of twill tape, you're going to put a little knot on the very end of each one, and you're going to staple them into the middle of each one of those ties that you just stapled on, and you're gonna staple them so that they flow down the back side of the blind. So take the one end that you knotted and staple it into the middle of that tie so that the the long twill tape is going down the back side of your blind. And then do the exact same thing to the middle of that other tie that you already have stapled on there with the second twill tape. So you've got each twill tape stapled into the middle of that tie on the back side of your batten and the twill tape is flowing down the back side of your blind. We're getting really close to the finish now. We just have to screw the batten into the window frame and then rig up our pulley system with the twill tape. So I'm just testing it here to make sure that everything looks right before I call on my wonderful husband to screw the batten into the wood frame for me. Um, you probably do need two people to do this just because the blind itself kind of gets in the way. Although in a pinch, you probably might be able to manage um, screwing the batten into the wood frame by yourself. I held the blind out of the way while my husband um, used his power drill to to screw the batten directly into the window frame. He used just two screws and it is up there very securely now. Now it's time to rig up the pulley system. You can see my daughter's trying out the other one that we already did, and I am working on this one. So the way that you do this, you bring the twill tape that you, you stapled behind the shade that's coming from behind the shade, and you bring it up and around the front, and then you thread it through the little uh, one-inch O-ring at the top, at directly above where you have just pulled it up. So yeah, you just thread it right through there and then you pull it down again all the way to the bottom of your shade. And then you do the exact same thing on the other side with the other twill tape and the other O-ring. And then you have to decide where you're going to have your cleat, which is where you're going to wrap these twill tapes around to keep them safely out of the way. And also it's part of the pulley mechanism 
of the shade. I d did not have the cleats when I made this video, so I'm just going to show you. Um, it, Anyway, the cleat was going to be on the far left-hand side, and so I took the twill tape farthest away from there, the first one that I did, and I went up and over and threaded that first twill tape over across through the second o-ring so the first twill tape is threaded through both the first o-ring and the second o-ring once you've done that you can take both of the twill tapes which are now both hanging on the left hand side and roll up your Swedish blind. It might take a couple of times to train the fabric to roll really smoothly, but mine, it really, it worked really well pretty much right away. I had to do a little tiny bit of adjusting, but nothing much. And I think that that's where pressing the fabric at the very beginning makes a really big difference. And then those two strings that are on, hanging on the left, you can knot the ends, you can knot them together, you can knot each end separately, and then you can wind them around your blind cleat that's going to be attached to the side of the window. And there you see it just rolls up like that. And if I had a cleat there, I could wind it around and it would stay, but I don't have the cleats yet. So I'm just gonna hold it there to show you, but it would stay there with the cleat and then it just rolls down that way. And that is the story of how I finally made a Swedish blind. I hope that this inspires you to make your own Swedish blinds. I think it's a really cool window covering with a lot of great history. If you love Swedish country style, please check out my whole Swedish country style playlist. And I also have a tutorial for how to make a faux um, Roman shade that you can wash. I made those for my kitchen. Let me know in the comments if you're thinking of making Swedish blinds for a room in your own house. I will link the materials and tools that I used down below in case you want a whole list to go shopping with. I did buy this fab fabric a couple of years back, so it's probably not in stock anymore at Walmart, but um, I'm sure that Walmart has some great options out there. They have a Waverly line of fabric that I'm really fond of. These were both Waverly prints. So again, I will link all that down below and thank you so much for watching and I hope that this inspired you to make some Swedish blinds for your own home. I will see you again next week. Bye for now. Take care.